Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is going to present some of the photos and videos necessary to understand the Chinese 1960 climb. I'm doing this as a separate video because the Chinese have been claiming copyrights on all their Everest footage, so I will present it here under fair use and then reference it in an upcoming video. That way, if there are problems, the main video can remain intact. I'll start with this video taken from below the second step. From here, we can match up a rock. So that is a fairly lengthy film taken from below the second step. If they had such films taken as they climbed above the second step, confirming their summit would be simple. But what we have from above the second step is just a still frame taken from a short film sequence. The actual film sequence is not available, and this still frame is analyzed in the book Detectives on Everest. In Detectives, Hemlock comes to the conclusion that this frame was indeed taken above the second step, and I'll look into that in an upcoming video. Another item I'll look at is Mark Horrell's analysis of the Chinese 1960 climb, which I link in the description. Horrell's analysis is useful because he provides a non-propaganda analysis. And while I will disagree with a number of Horrell's points, it demonstrates how legitimate debate on a subject can take place, by both sides stating what their position is and analyzing facts that both favor and disfavor that position. Horrell's analysis was written in 2013, and since then more information has come to light that raises serious questions about the Chinese 1960 ascent key problem being that film segment I just showed. Another key problem is that the British in 1933 described the exact same route as the Chinese claimed to have taken. Horrell argues that if the Chinese did not reach the summit, there is no way they would have known about that particular route. And yet the British in 1933 did not come close to the summit and somehow managed to figure it out. Horrell was also unaware that the Chinese had also described a different route in a published account. In Horrell's comments section, Horrell explores various possibilities, and you can see the origin stories of many current myths. For instance, back in 2003, an interview came out that the Chinese had found a camera, took it back to Beijing, and were unable to develop the film. That version of the story had the camera being found in 1960, but the story of the camera being found and the film being mucked up has been around for a long time in one version or another. And not surprisingly, that interview with the Chinese climber who allegedly saw the camera was done in Chinese, but neither the recording nor the transcript has been made available. Another interesting comment on Harrell's blog is from John Clare. It is not on the same post as the Chinese climb, but I will link it in the description. In that comment, it is claimed that the Chu Yin Kua, one of the 1960 Chinese climbers, spoke privately about the 1960 summit and said that while they did make the summit, it was nothing like the published accounts. Ultimately, the question of whether the Chinese reached the summit in 1960 can be decided by summit rocks. The Chinese claim to have collected nine rock samples, and not surprisingly, they took pictures of those rocks and even published a detailed photograph of one of the rocks. If the Chinese can produce that rock, and it is confirmed to be from the summit by a Western lab, the only mystery remaining would be exactly how they made it to the summit.